how did Brad look to you tonight? And, and it looked pretty good. I, I looked guess. great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well rested, I guess. Yeah. How did he come back so dark? Uh, you know, once again, he's he's kind of been in these situations before. He's you know, 10 years in the NBA. I think he knows how to kind of keep his body right, keep himself ready. Um, it's just, you know, the sign of a professional. Uh, it's never ideal to miss, you know, game action, but you can do some things to kind of keep yourself mentally sharp, physically uh, in tune. But there's is, there's no way to replicate running up and down the floor, getting hit, and, you know, moving and cutting, changing speeds. Uh, so there was some fatigue early, but, you know, he didn't lose any – any pop or any bounce or he, he looked sharp. I know you weren't here last year, but this team went through an extended outbreak and, um, you know, some of the guys who came back, it took them a while to kind of regain their rhythm. And is, is there anything you guys do now uh, or differently that, you know, this kind of helps that cause that maybe they learn from that experience? Well, maybe they learn individually, but there's nothing we can do, you know, when they're sequestered, you know, at home or, you know, I, I talked to Pope, he said, basically stuck in the basement for six days. So I'm not sure how much, there is to do there, but um, everybody last season, last two seasons really has gone through this to some degree. And I think we kind of take some, you know, some of those experiences and we're better for it, but still not ideal. What did you know anything about Brad's movement tonight? He looked, and his passing, I guess he looked, um, he looked really sharp in a, in a way where he just looked a little bit more sure I guess. Uh, I mean, we've seen him like that at times so I mean I was pleased you know to your point that after missing so much time he was able to just kind of jump back in and fit seamlessly um but you know I don't I, I don't think it's anything unique to him or his game I think it's um he's he's able to do it and he's done it at a high level so I think it's great Wes what did you uh what did you see from the other Brad want to make there I know he uh the other Brad yeah. Um, well, you know, once again, he's been there. He's done it. You know, he's, he's been on a roster. He's been a rotation guy for, for some years. Um, he's played in big moments in, in Europe and was you know, on the Celtics in the playoffs in the bubble. So this isn't, you know, anything special. He's, he's been around. I think he gets it. He, he understands his impact and how he can, um, you know, help a team. So, you know, it's, it's good to have another body out there, a guy who's seasoned enough to get you through some, some situations. Uh, he doesn't know all the offense and, you know, but uh, he was able to keep us organized, which is good. How much are you involved in the conversation when uh, the front office is bringing in a, in a player? Uh, we talk constantly, you know, Tommy and I are, um, you know, we talk a few times a day, you know, whether it's, you know, face to face or, you know, text or phone. Um, but these types of situations are fluid because sometimes those calls have to be, you know, they unfold within an hour. You know, you find out there's a positive test. There's, okay, well, what do we do? So there are a lot of moving parts. Um, and I got to give him, his staff, a lot of credit because they've kind of helped us ease through this. This is, uh, hasn't been easy and trying to figure out the protocols, the, you know, changes in, you know, what those look like. Uh, how does it affect us? What, how do we practice, you know, if, if and when we can? Um, what are the rules and how do we get guys back? So there's so many moving parts um, that, I need those guys to kind of help guide me through it. Well, it's been reported uh, by a very esteemed reporter <laughs> that uh, Brad got one one back one dose of vaccine. Uh, what kind of food? No point What kind of food hmm. does it get to uh, give the team to know that the leader has gotten at least some protection? Well, I, honestly, I don't have confirmation on that. I mean, so. Uh, it's tough for me to comment on. I, I never want to get into someone's status, vaccination status or, you know, if it's true, great. Um, you know, I think it's terrific. But, um, you know, I think it's just one of those things. It's a personal choice. The guy has to kind of work through it. Um, but we're, we're all educated as far as the benefits of it and, you know, where we stand and what the guidelines are. So I think that's an important thing. Um, you know, the, the sooner the better for everybody. But I'm, I don't want to kind of get into – you know, individual players' status at this point. I mean, if that's true, then it's terrific. Uh, with regard to Jack, uh, yet another time where as you have his offense, as you attend to shot, block shots, came down on someone's foot, mm -hmm. rolled maybe, and maybe came back again. Uh, what, is, what does that show you that he does that repeatedly? 
Well, it's good. I mean, I think it's at this point in the season, um, I don't think anyone's without bumps and bruises. So obviously we're all kind of dealing and navigating through COVID, but I don't think there's anyone out there who's, who feels, you know, rested <laughs> and that's just the nature of it. So you're going to have to pay, play at some point through a little discomfort at times through pain. Uh, no one's asking you to play hurt, um, but it's just a great sign. A guy who you know, is going to push himself for the benefit of the team. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a sign of maturity and it's a sign of toughness that a guy can kind of gut, gut through his own discomfort, you know, for, for the benefit of everybody. We saw Denny uh, playing point guard on offense and then guarding bigs uh, on defense for an extended stretch. Um, when you're missing players at basically every position, how valuable is that? Oh, it's a good experience for him, you know, and we put the ball in his hands at times, you know, throughout the season, but to do it for, you know, extended period is, is going to be new for him. Um, you know, Brad's obviously shown he's capable, um, but you want to kind of move Brad off the ball at times. So, you know, he can get in catch and shoot situations and, um, you know, use him in that regard. So you need that other ball handler. Denny's done a pretty good job of, of handling that. He's going to have to navigate some pressure at times. The team's going to start picking him up. And uh, it's also, you know, a next step for him to be able to get guys to spots and organize the offense. He hasn't really been in that spot a lot outside of those specific plays that put him, you know, as a secondary ball handler. How were you able to limit Evan Mobley uh, in the second half? Um, you know what? I thought Gaff did a better job of, of meeting him early, being more physical, um, pushing him off his spot a little bit in the post. Um, it, it's a shame. I was talking to the other coaches. Every time we play Cleveland, I feel like he's gotten better. Um, and he shows a little bit more each time, which is a little bit scary because the kid's really talented. Um, but I thought Gaff did a pretty good job. You know, we were a little bit more active in, in our digs and, and giving a little bit more help. But um, yeah, he's going to be a problem. So I think it's, you know, it's going to be a point of emphasis for us to um, do your work early, you know, try to make things uncomfortable, get into him, um, trying to, you know, push him off the spots a bit. But um, I thought Gab did a better, much better job the second half. You mentioned that kind of playing in the half court, especially against this team, is going to be pretty important on offense. What did you make of the half court offense so far? Oh, overall, it was solid. You know, it, uh, I know they're missing a few guys, and, you know, that, that detracts a little bit from what they do. But, you know, they're still a solid defensive team. Um, I give our guys credit. We were able to um, keep ourselves spaced, limit our turnovers, I think eight for five points, which is great. Um, you know, so we got shots to the rim, um, open up looks, and obviously Brad had a, had a big night. Uh, Pope stepped up and made big, big shots. You know, oh, Kyle made some big plays for us as well. So uh, all around, I thought it was a great team win. Moises. Hey, coach, congratulations on the win to, to, uh, to start off. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of positive things happened tonight, but I guess one of the things that a lot of people are talking about online is the fact that you have a young man, Jaime Chenique, Colombian, the first Colombian, didn't get any points, but what was it for you to have him on the, on the floor? And what do you see in this guy? Well, it was great. You know, we, uh, we kind of celebrated a little bit this morning, you know, after we, we told him. Um, we were unable to have like a shoot around, but we could have like a masked walkthrough um, where, where guys just kind of talking through the uh, offense and defense philosophies. Uh, he was super excited. And, uh, and I said, look, you have no idea the impact of this being the first, um, you know, of anything's you know, remarkable in itself. But, um, you know, to, to do that and be the first in your country is incredible. Um, so he was really excited. I'm really happy for him. You know, we, we've had him since summer league. And he's another one of those kids where, you know, from day one, um, you saw him get better every day. His effort and attention to detail. Um, he brings a smile every day. So he's a joy to be around. Uh, so I think it's great for, for him. It's good for our locker room. And obviously, you know, he's been terrific for the go-go. But um, to be rewarded in, in this sense is uh, that's part of the process. That's why, you, you know, you go through uh, some of the tough times and some of the uncertain times and to see uh, it kind of play out for him is, is terrific. Neil. Hey coach, what do you think allowed Kyle to be so successful tonight? His, his level of aggression. Uh, I thought, you know, he, he played downhill. Um, he was, he was aggressive early and I, he stayed in attack mode, didn't force the issue, but, you know, took advantage of his ability to play off the bounce. And, you know, at times they, they put size on him. He, he's able to maneuver around those guys. So, 
Uh, I really liked his level of aggression. In fact, it, for the most part, we took care of the ball. Raphael. Coach, with Brad, um, hope you're well. With Bradley Beal back tonight, he led on points and assists. How would you describe his role, his role, his growth, and what do you think he brings on the team? Uh, well, I mean, I think we've all kind of seen his growth, you know, over the last 10 years. I mean, of course, I've seen some of that from afar. But uh, and I think for, you know, just this short season, you know, he's, he's a leader. Um, you know, at times it's, it's not always easy, you know, because – They're going to put multiple bodies on him. They're going to show him a lot of looks and, and try to junk it up for him. Um, but he's just able to kind of steady us. You know, obviously, he's our best player. So to have him back is uplifting within itself. Um, the fact that he'd come back and not miss a beat, it, it was big for us tonight. Um, but, you know, as a playmaker, we've seen it time and time again. He's a willing playmaker. And I think once, you know, that ball starts moving, everyone benefits from it. And we, of course, know that he's capable of getting a shot at any point. Um, but he didn't force the issue. He doesn't chase shots. You know, we try to put him in position to um, be a facilitator as well, but also to stay aggressive, and he, and he did that tonight. With Jaime, uh, with Jaime on the team, what role does he, does he bring to the Wizards? Well, you know, he's going to be a uh, you know, secondary big. You know, we're, we're down a few bodies, um, and I think, you know, with his size, agility, um, you know, he's shown a, the, the knack for, a ball, for the ball and able to rebound. Uh, he's got a nice touch around the paint. You know, really good feet, agility, um, and nice touch, you know, probably 18, 15, 18 feet. Uh, we're not going to ask him to score. We're just kind of, you know, find his way through the system. But take advantage of those opportunities, you know, defend at a high level, um, rebound the ball. You know, you have to screen and get guys open. And you know, obviously, if you screen well, you'll, you'll benefit from it. Thank you, Coach. Last question to Brianna. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, tonight wasn't the best shooting night for Corey, but he's currently on the court right now, shooting, getting some shots up. I mean, what can you say about his persistence? Say, say the last part again, I'm sorry? What can you say about his persistence? I'm sorry, I still couldn't hear you. His persistence? What can you his say persistence, about? I'm sorry. No, no uh, you know what? I think that's a, it's just a uh, kind of a, a glimpse at who he is. You know, he's a worker. And, you know, I think he's a little frustrated that those shots haven't gone down. It's, it's certainly not for the lack of effort, but, uh, you know, he puts the time in every day. So regardless of whether they go in in the game or not, all of us, you know, coaches, his teammates, we trust him. We trust that he's going to make the right play. He's going to try and, you know, if he doesn't like it, he's going to drive it. He's done a nice job of finishing in, in the paint, finishing through contact. But, you know, he's going to kind of play his own game and he's not going to force the issue. Uh, if he keeps taking those right types of shots, I'll live with it, you know, and I think we, he's shown he can step up and make them uh, right now is, you know, a little bit of a struggle, but that's okay. Uh, he'll get his rhythm back and he'll start knocking those, those shots down soon. What can, what can you say about just the, this experience? Man, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm out of work. Uh, it's just, it's just so much at this point in my life that, doesn't matter all the obstacles that have surpassed your life, all those things just came to this moment, man. Those are the things that you really appreciate in life and make you just keep going and keep being hungry. Uh, January the 4th was a day that I'm never gonna forget about it. Uh, that's when I tore my, my, uh, my patella tendon this year and uh, being in Spain and you think that the adversity is coming your way when you are in your best moment. And I don't know how many months later, like 11, 12 months later, you come up here, you debut, being in the NBA. It's just an amazing feeling. God is great, man. Celebration, like Wes said, you guys had a little celebration this morning. Man, it's just appreciating the opportunities. It's a crazy time for us, for everybody. So all the guys that are being called up uh, are taking advantage of the opportunities and, and, and over time is being rewarded by this. How do you handle that moment where you're going to be in, it's not going to be a long stretch of time, you know you have to make an opportunity, but you also can't go crazy out there. Yeah, play wild. that's when you are professional. That's when you keep your composure and understanding that you need to do your role and do it at the best. My role is communicating, uh, telling people, uh, 
to locate in the, in the, in the core, grabbing rebounds, defending, and you you cannot let um, the excitement of the moment take over your head. You have to keep composure, understanding that this is your job, and you have to do it at the best, at the highest level. Uh, I think so. Uh, it, it, it's been a crazy day, man. If I tell you that uh, this morning when I wake up, I had 20 missed calls, and everybody was like trying to reach out of, to me because, uh, and I was, today was actually the day that I decided to stay in bed, in, on bed 15 minutes later. <laughs> and was the day that I got caught up. <laughs> I have to make it to the arena. It's, Normally take me 15 minutes. It took me seven to get there. <laughs> so it's been just an amazing day, man. It's it's hell of a year. Best way to close the year, and and I'm just happy, happy for me, happy for my family, happy for my country, happy for the people that believe in me, and happy for myself. Who called you? <laughs> man, Coach Mike, uh, my head coach from the Capital City Go Go, Tommy, uh, Amber, teammates. <laughs> They send people to knock on my door, <laughs> and it's just, it's just crazy, man. It's just. What does this mean for young Colombian basketball players? Man, my, I always been say, don't let nobody tell you no. If I tell you them how many people closed the doors on me, how many people told me I wasn't good enough, how many people told me I was lazy, how many people told me that I was just tall, just a tall guy, that somebody that was unathletic, and I just put the work in, and I never let those comments get over my head and stop me. I, otherwise, I appreciate those people that at some moment they were haters because I know they are swallowing their words right now. How many times have you gotten emotional? Man, um, I drove to the arena and I was normal. I call my, I call. I call my family, I call my dad. And then when I, we went to walk through this morning, I was getting the parking lot and I just couldn't believe it. And I just stopped and cried. Like, it just, it just this stop, this times of life where you're never gonna forget about it. Has there been a moment today where you've kind of been able to, to breathe and kind of relax and take everything in or is it pretty much then high speed all day? I've been able to kind of look around and kind of take in what's happening. Being honest at this point, if if I'm dreaming, please don't wake me up. <laughs> I mean, I've been trying to lock in every all day. I knew that I could have an opportunity to play today. Obviously, it's been a fast paced day, but I'm just trying to, you know, um, slow it down and take it easy and, and enjoy it. Enjoy this time of life because as much as you put the, the, the work in, you need to understand that you need to appreciate this moment and enjoy it. Because this is gonna be for these are the memories you're gonna carry on forever. We'll go to Zoom. We'll start with Moises. Jaime, ¿cómo estás? Felicidades por el gran logro. Eh, Moises Linares de Telemundo 44 aquí en la capital. ¿Qué se siente lograr esta esta gran meta? Te vemos entre lágrimas. Veo muchos colegas que bueno están aquí por por ti porque este es un día especial para Colombia es un día especial para todos los latinos que ven la NBA y verte llegar hasta este momento aunque solo fueron pocos minutos qué significa para ti y qué está pasando por tu mente mira por mi mente ahora mismo solamente hay seguir trabajando seguir seguir eh, explotando mis mis habilidades seguir creyendo en mí En este no es el, en, ni el final ni el inicio. Esto es la continuación de todo el trabajo que he hecho durante toda mi carrera. Y, y, y pues Dios ha abierto las puertas exactas para yo estar en este preciso momento. Jamás en mi vida pensé ser el primero, ni el segundo, ni el tercero. Y las oportunidades llegan a tu puerta cuando tú menos te lo esperas. Y solamente es aprovecharlas y dar lo, lo mejor de ti. Um, seguir trabajando. Es lo único que pienso, seguir trabajando, trabajando, trabajando para que esto no sea de, de 10 días, sino que sea por años. Rafael. Jaime, felicidades. Aquí Rafael de Tap Deportes de Puerto Rico. ¿Cómo se siente estar en la NBA? ¿Cuál tú piensas que es tu rol con este equipo? Mira, es, es una sensación que... que que yo lo dije en, en, en pretemporada uno de mis compañeros, yo jamás como fan había asistido a, a un NBA game. 
ah, eh, tengo mucho ego por mí. Y, y, y yo dije, y la primera vez que fui NBA Game estaba siendo parte de él, que fue contra los Houston Rockets en, en pretemporada. Uh, después de eso, nosotros tenemos uh, free tickets por lo, para los juegos y, y mi ego no me dejaba ir a la arena para a ver los, los apoyaba viendo los partidos de, de casa, pero jamás dije, yo no voy a ir a un partido si no hago parte de él. Y, y yo creo que eh, gracias a Dios las cosas se dieron. Uh, mi rol está claro y mis cualidades eh, como jugador son muy claras. Rebotear, correr la cancha, defender el aro. Son cosas primordiales para mí que me van a dar los minutos necesarios y, y es lo que tengo que hacer al, al mejor, al alto nivel. Gracias. Franca, Fra Franca Mente, Apolando. Hola, Jaime. Yo creo que la emoción es para toda Colombia. No creas que eres el único que está así en esta situación. Todos los que te conocemos y que están viviendo este momento Estamos muy emocionados. Disculpa si en cualquier momento se llega a entrecortar la voz, pero es la, la, la emoción que sentimos desde que se conoció la noticia. Primero quisiera saber qué tanto le pediste a Dios, qué tanto hablaste con tu familia, con tu mamá, con tu papá, con tus amigos del barrio San Pachito, como, como se le conoce popularmente. ¿Qué tanto hablaste con él y con Dios para que llegara este momento? Mira, durante, desde el showcase han pasado muchas cosas que me las reservo para mí mismo. Y obviamente al, al momento de ver que, que hay muchos call-ups de muchos equipos, te comienza a cuestionar, es que eso no soy bueno, es que qué es lo que está pasando. Pero en ningún momento me frustré, en ningún momento me dio envidia, me alegré por las personas que llegaron call up. Desde el más profundo de mi corazón, en ningún momento sentí ninguna clase de... De, de como que frustración, al contrario, yo le decía a Dios, Dios, sí. y, y siempre lo que he hecho, desde que me fui a mi casa a los 17 años hasta hoy a mis 24 ha sido lo mismo, Dios, tú abrirás las puertas y me colocarás en los lugares para ser exitoso y hasta ahora Dios nunca me ha fallado. Uh, anoche precisamente, uh, han sido una, una semana muy dura, y anoche precisamente no estaba ni frustrado, me, me acosté y le dije, mira Dios, si, eh, yo sé que lo que tú tienes guardado para mí, eso no me lo va a quitar nadie. Y, y, y así fue, o sea, me acosté muy contento y, y precisamente pff, eh, esta mañana fue, muy, fue algo muy rápido y, y pues nada, hablé con mis compañeros, a, hablé con mis padres, les conté la noticia, mi mamá llorando, mi papá muy contento a mi grupo, amigos, mejor dicho, nos cae la dicha. No he podido abrir mi celular mucho tiempo porque ah, yo no contesto mensajes cuando ah, es el día de partido. Y, y pues ahora que, que el, mi celular está que explota en estos momentos, y, y pues nada, esto es para mi gente, para mi barrio, para mi ciudad, para mi, para mi país, para Sudamérica en general, y, y pues que todos los sueños pueden hacerse realidad. Solamente hay que ser disciplinado y trabajar duro para ellos. Y, y desde que me fui a mi casa no he parado, no he parado. Y llegar a estos momentos es, es satisfactorio. Como lo dije anteriormente, muchas personas me dijeron que no, que no era bueno. Y yo le doy gracias a Dios por darme la motivación para seguir adelante. Jaime, ya para culminar mi, mi participación, ¿qué mensaje le dejas a Colombia y a Latinoamérica? Que sé que están pendientes, que sé que están viéndote, que sé que están emocionados así como tú lo estás en este momento ¿qué mensaje le dejas a todos ellos? Me vale la pena soñar se vale la pena soñar ese es mi mensaje Te agradecemos en nombre de todos los colombianos ¿eh? Abrazo, hermano. Te quiero. We'll do last question to Wayne. Hey, Jaime. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being the first Colombia born player. I get to talk to you a lot when you play uh, your games during the go-go. How does it mean to be a living proof of make lemonade? Man, to take advantage of every opportunity. There you go. It's the best example that I can have of there, man. I I never been discouraged at any decision that I've been making in my life. 
when my agents told me the best way to 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 come back to United States was going to Spain, I say, let's do it. Mm -hmm. I take advantage of that opportunity, no matter, no matter how far I was from my city in a new in a, another continent, being even farther away from my family, I just take advantage of that opportunity. I got hurt and I improved myself, improved my body, improved mentally to grow up as a man and be able to take better decisions in my life. Going to summer league, I remember first game I didn't play. I just played like three minutes, four minutes, and I just, and I didn't get discouraged. I was happy to be there. Mm -hmm. And the next game, I make, I make lemonade. There you go. <laughs> and, and sticking with the make lemonade, uh, I mean, a lot of young guys and guys in general get discouraged. What was it that kept you going to, you know, you would realize your dream today? I mean, it can be encouraged the fact that I know it's a supreme force up there looking up to us that know that he's going to put us in the best position to be successful. I learned that when you ask God for patience, he don't going to give you patience. He's going to test your patience. And when you tell God to ask for opportunities, he want to make sure that you prepare yourself when the opportunity comes. Mm -hmm. So we never can tell God how to bless us. That's something I learned. God will bless us in the way that he is supposed to and make sure we understand the process of it. So that's that's what I live by. How did you feel out of uh, coming out of protocol specifically? Like how were you kind of able to pull that off when you first came back? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, for getting me back, being back out with the guys, um, keeping me healthy, keeping the fam healthy. Um, for me, it was, I was fine. Um, it was just, you know, getting past those first couple of minutes where, you know, you trying to get your win back. But for the most part, I was cool. I haven't played since Utah game, but, you know, I was, you know, I'm blessed to be able to have some, some things in my house that keeps me, keeps me in shape and, uh, and, uh, make sure I don't lose a step. So, and then on top of that, just taking advantage of your rest time, taking advantage of film. Uh, there's always other ways you can get better. You know, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't in the gym every single day. Um, but when I did, you know, it was very productive and I was happy to be back out there that night. You said before that you were open to getting vaccinated. What can you tell me to do? Uh, my family. Is there anything change about your family that you need to remind us? I'm just leaving it at that. I'm not going too deep into it. Oh man, my last week was, you know, I would say it wasn't lonely, but it was lonely. I was in the basement by myself, uh, pretty much uh, the whole uh, the protocol I would I had, um, but it was fun. Like 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 Brad said, just I'm blessed to have things in my house, you know, to keep me, you know, focused. Uh, you know, I can get some work in, you know, I can, you know, just chill and relax and taking uh, advantage of that sleep time. Either one of you guys both kind of mentioned the things you're saying physically. I mean, what's it like mentally not being with the team, having to watch things on TV, not being able to have a lot of time? Uh, it's always tough, man. I mean, it's tough because, I mean, it's not just us, it's the whole league. You know, everybody's, everybody's losing bodies. Um, you know, everybody's picking up guys from the G, um, you know, all over the place, you know, so it's, uh, I think the frustrating part for us is, well, at least for me, it was, is I was negative the entire time and I missed three games because of that, you know, so I think that's the, that's the frustrating part with my, my situation because, you know, I didn't, didn't have COVID and I had to miss three games because of it, you know, so uh, it's tough, you know, because we were competitors, we know, <clears throat> we know how important we are to the team and, it was funny because when we we came back, we were everybody was like running up to us, giving us hugs, like they haven't seen us, and like, we're just these new kids on the block. Like, oh my god, you know. So it was that was a good feeling though. It was good to be able to be back around the guys and to be able to see that you know they know what we can bring. They know how you know the energy changes when we're around. So that was that was a good feeling to have, and it was definitely a good win. Yeah, that's all I said. It's contact tracing. Yeah.
Fred, you, you were one of the few guys last year, I, I believe, who didn't go into protocol. You had all that time off, and I, I know it affected you guys' team coming mm. back after that season. Mm. Is there anything you've learned or that you know, the training staff has told you differently going through that experience that allows you to be so sharp going back this time? No, not really. Um, every person is different. Everybody's mindset is different. And I guess it's more mental than anything. Obviously, you want to take care of your body, but uh, you know, making sure you're eating right, not gaining weight too quick. You know, it's, just like, it's a lot of stuff you got to factor in. You know, so for us, I think you being mentally ready to go. You know, once you're, you know, once you know it's okay, this is when you're back. You know, I prepared myself these last three to four days of getting on the court, getting getting back into a rhythm, getting back to how it was before I, I, I left, you know? So uh, it, was, it was just kind of getting back to the routine. And once I did that, you know, it's muscle memory. It's like riding a bike again. Uh, I mean, my, I would say my, my first day, uh, that's when I, I just body aches, you know, fever. Uh, man, after that first day, I was I was fine for the for remaining on my uh, my protocol, uh, my quarantine. So uh, you know that first day was real tough, and then after that, I was fine back back to being normal. Uh, still, pretty much had my uh, taste, smell, everything pretty much. Uh, so basically, just waiting out the quarantine. Make sure I understand it correctly. Mayor's about people having to be vaccinated to get into this building or did that have anything to do with your vaccination decision? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think we were aware of that at the time, right when they threw me into protocol, but it wasn't, like I said, at the beginning of the year, this is always something I've been thinking about, you know, and it's, it's obviously came, came to a point to where I was like, okay, you know, just get it out the way and not have to deal with it. Um, but there's still a lot of questions I still have. There's still, you know, you know, we're us around the league. We're trying to figure out, you know, how we can be better, how we can still be safe. And, you know, 90% of our league is, is vaccinated. You know, we're still going down like flies, you know. So we, we're just trying to make sure that we, we're all protected. You know, and for me, it's, it's selfishly, I'm, I'm more concerned about my father and my family. So uh, last thing I want to do is see him in the hospital and on the table. So if that helps, then... Okay, I'll do it, but I still have a lot of questions and uh, concerns about it for sure. 100%. Thank you. What was it like seeing him? Uh, did you notice, I guess, the emotions of, you know, he made history tonight being the first call to the NBA play? Damn, I know that. Yeah. My man Jaime, I didn't know that. Jaime is, I did not know that. <laughs> That's, my know that. That's my guy too. Yeah, he's always like great energy, always smiling on his with a, with a smile on his face. Uh, when I see him, um, he's always dapping me up, you know, giving a hug. I even got a hug today when I seen him. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, he's That's a great crazy. dude, man. He's always for me. He's always smiling and just with that great energy. That's amazing. I think this is like I say that for all guys, you know, who who have an opportunity to be able to achieve their dreams, you know. Um, and it's crazy, like this year is a year for a lot of guys, you know, because um, we understand how hard it's hard to get here. It is hard. I think a lot of people have it kind of misconstrued. They think a lot of stuff that we do is easy. They think getting to the league is easy. It is not, man. You know, and then you have so many guys in the G who are deserving of being up here. You know, these guys actually deserve spots. Um, and a lot of them just don't have that opportunity, you know. So, you know, for a lot of guys are fortunate to be able to have opportunities, that, and a lot of them are taking advantage of it, you know. And we have a couple on our team, too. So, you know, to see Brad Wanamaker come over and start for us and have the impact he had, granted, he's a he's a pro. Like, he's been – he's done this before. Uh, but, you know, for Jaime, that's, that's unbelievable. I'm ecstatic for him. Uh, you know, he's a true hard worker. He's an unbelievable kid. And then when he comes in, it's like Pope said, it's just, he enlightens the group. You know, he he just lifts the group, his energy, his presence. Uh, he's always great to be around him, Jay Good, uh, Joel, everybody. Like those guys are always fun to have around. And it's always good to be able to see them get their opportunity. So you, uh, like you were 
matches where you played individually since early in the year. Mm -hmm. Now you've strung along and again you've been able to play. I'm still not happy. <laughs> yeah, I should say my question. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? How do you feel about the game? Uh, I was really, I was, I'll say this. I will take back everything I said about myself a few weeks ago because I was too critical of myself. We as human beings were always, I know me specifically, I'm super critical of myself. Nobody, fan, media, coaches, my mom, <laughs> Pope, like nobody's going to hold themselves to a higher standard than what I do. You know, nobody's going to push themselves harder than I do. Nobody's going to critique themselves and put themselves down more than I do. Uh, but why? Why? Like, I know who I am. I'm confident in who I am. And it's kind of like what KD said, like, I'm Kevin Durant from Bradley Bill. Like, we all know who I am. We all know what, I cap what I'm capable of doing. Let me just go out and do that and have fun doing it, you know? Don't take the joy out of the game. Like, this game is fun. We played this game since we were little. And we played it because it was fun. And I just got back to that joy. That's that's it. You know, I didn't, it's not, didn't complicate it, didn't overthink it, you know, just played how I know how I can play. How did you get to that place about yourself? Well, I would say it's my spirituality, honestly. I've, I've transitioned and put myself in a, in a place with God to where he's in control. Like, I don't, I've taken a back seat to everything in my life. Like, basketball, my family, my boys, my wife, my kids, everything I endure, everything that I face on a day-to-day. -day. It's like I just, I just kind of let things happen. Like, if whatever happens, happen good, bad, ugly. You know, I'm not in control of it. Um, and just in understanding that, you know, having that faith, having that trust, having that, that sense of peace, you know, there's nothing like having God's peace. Like, you know, there's nothing that can bother you. There's nothing that, you know, can alter your universe. Like, you're good. And that's how I am right now. I'm good. Hello. Congratulations on the win, guys, first of all. Uh, but, like, how needed was that performance for this team, mentally wise? And how important is to keep that momentum of that performance? Uh, it was super important. Uh, I know we've been talking because we we haven't played the last three games, you know. So for us, it was we were excited to just be back, you know, just to be able to get back on the floor, touch the basketball, get up and down. Uh, but in the back of my head, I understood where we were as a team. You know, we I think we lost what two out of the last three, but our team wasn't, you know, in our games, kind of were depleted in some areas, but I know we're still missing us too. Like we're still, you know, there's a lot of, we're still missing Rui, we're missing TV, we're still missing pieces, you know, but I understand the impact I have when I'm around the team and same with him. Like it's, it's whether you like it or not, we're kind of thrusted into that position of leadership. Uh, and so it was it, to be able to feel like I felt the energy today, like when I walked in the building, like you just, you could feel the camaraderie built up. You could feel everybody ready to go. Uh, and that's, that's all I want. That's all I want to do. You know, that's all we want to do tonight. And granted, that's a really tough team. They've been playing their tails off, uh, you know, over the last 12, 15 games, you know? Um, and so for us, we realized that and we, we, we cut the water off or at least tried to, uh, for the majority of the game. And, uh, we all play together. I think that's what happened. We play together on both ends of the floor, and we got it done. And how many, how how many steps in the right direction do you feel that you made? Well, I wouldn't count the steps, Chris Dos, but I'm sure we've made we've made a few of them. <laughs> I'm sure we made a few going, you know, in the right direction. Uh, and I think that's a great question because that's that's a that's been kind of our Achilles heel is developing that that consistency, you know, game after game after game. Uh, and that's that's funny because I think that's what Coach said after talking to one of our assistants. We, we're going back to our bad habits, you know. Uh, so we got to eliminate those. And, you know, this is a great momentum game, a great feel-good game to build off of. Uh, but we got two more tough ones coming in here. So we got to make sure we're ready to go. Thank you very much. Keep up. Mm. Raphael? Be your hope. Um, hope you guys are good. The question is for the both of you. How does it feel to be back on the court with the same intensity and the game that you and do what you guys normally do? Um, I feel like it it felt it felt good just to be out there, you know, like that energy that 
was shown tonight, you know, that came from just uh, being in the locker room with the guys, you know, just being able to get back on the court uh, and, and just play, you know, our game. Uh, it just, like, I, I would just say it just felt good just to be back in the gym. Thank you. Karita. Hey, Brad, I just want to go back to something you said earlier about getting your joy back and having God's peace. Was there like a particular moment where you just said, like, I just got to let go and I can't control things? Uh, it's kind of, that's funny you ask that. It's kind of been an a, a inner battle I've been having with myself over the last couple of months. Granted, I've had a lot of adversity and and that, you know, you, you try to figure out and find yourself, find others, be there for others. And, you know, you're not necessarily taking care of yourself. Um, and so for me, it was just realizing that, you know, <laughs> I'm not him. Like, I can't control everything. I can't make people happy all the time. Uh, you're not going to please everybody, you know. Um, and there's going to be some things that I just fully just cannot control in my own life. You know, things that I want to go a certain way. And they go the complete opposite. Um, and so when, you, when you're in those, those predicaments, like, that's it's clearly a voice telling you, like, yo, let go. Like, you have to let go. Um, where's your faith? You know, who do you trust? Um, it's crazy. I have a tattoo on my left leg. Uh, it says, who are you playing for? It's just a constant reminder for me. Like, every time I'm out there on the floor, who am I playing for? Like, so stuff isn't going our way. Like, who are you playing for? Like, that's gives me back to, gets me back to that mindset of being joyful. Uh, being appreciative for the things I have, for the things I've been through, for the people around me, the teammates I have, um, you know, just embracing it all. Um, but when you let go, it's amazing what he can do. You know, he's 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 a lot smarter than us. That's for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people are having those moments lately. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Last question, Neil. Hey guys, uh, first off, glad that you guys are you know back feeling better. Um, Brad, for you, what were you able to do um, while you were in protocols? And I guess, you know, what was also the level of, you know, symptoms that you had to deal with? Uh, I was able to get shots up where I I'm, like I said before, I'm blessed to have some things in my house that I didn't have when I was a kid. Uh, I have a gym in my house, so I was able to get shots up and um, lift. I uh, pretty much do everything that I, I would do on the normal, you know, just keep my routine up, you know, kind of pick up my rhythm for, you know, last game I played in Utah and just kind of find that back and just keep it going. Uh, it's definitely tough when you're out a week and a half or more than that. And it's just, you're trying to find your way. So uh, for me, it's just staying engaged. You know, we missed the game in Miami and realized that we had about three days, you know, before Cleveland to get right. Um, and I, and I took full advantage of them. You know, I worked my tail off the last few days, get my body right. Um, well, we got a long year, and it's definitely around January. I think we're at home two, three weeks. So that benefits us, but, you know, we still we still got tough games that come coming up. But taking care of your body is always key, you know, whether you're playing or not playing. And if you can enlighten me, what's the 21203? Uh, I couldn't tell you if I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know this is Supreme joint. I know this ain't my area code. <laughs> honestly, I don't think it's any area code, honestly. Uh, it, it's I an area code in Baltimore, so I was confused. Oh, I was like, oh, I don't know that. My bad, Be More, baby. All right, baby. You know, I love my Be More folks. Uh, yeah, yeah. 21203. Nah, we all good. 